All right, good morning. Welcome back to Tiki making uh, video. This is today we're going to finish our Tiki's major design. We're not going to finish it completely, but we're going to get the bulk of the design work done. I've brought some examples for us to look at as far as uh, influence for design on Tiki. These are older Tiki's that have been made recent, not, not recently, some of them, but anyway. Um, so the important design detail we're going to work on today is what I call, um, there might be other names for it, complementary shapes. And I've got some examples of what complementary shapes are and how they work. In this instance, complementary shapes are shapes that complement or reinforce or otherwise uh, influence each other and the contours and shapes of the tiki and the uh, lines that, that you find on it. For instance, you've got this kind of line reinforced by shapes that goes around the mouth of the tiki and kind of this almost carapace look, almost like a bug or a, uh, a turtle might have kind of on the back of it. You can kind of see how these shapes, they kind of work together. This would be an example of complementary shapes. One shape has kind of influenced the shape of the other. These less are, are, are less complementary and just kind of working together, and that's fine. But here you've got some shapes that are, that are a little more complementary. Oops, I don't want to make a mess. Let's just lay that out of the way. Now here you have shapes that are very distinctly complementary because the, the way they work with the nose and, and the shape and the eyes, these shapes are kind of complementary, but here you have shapes that are especially complementary. This shape here is influenced or influencing these shapes here. That's kind of what I mean. They work very well together. One shape would look weird without the other. That's kind of the, the thing that makes a complementary shape work. It's the presence of other shapes. We're going to make uh, these kind of shapes on our tiki that we started. This is another example. Um, uh, of this is a thematic tiki. This is uh, the beetle a Beetlejuice theme. You can kind of see this tiki here is very large. It's a very big tiki. And it's got lots of complementary shapes that accent and kind of draw your attention to the to the contours of the shapes of the tiki. And it's kind of hard to get him all the way in the screen there. But there are details that are added. Here you can see on the back, you can see the shapes that are complementary on the back of it and you can see the the details that are added to it this is all rigid this is a thematic tiki that's had stuff added to it and you can see it's it's very three-dimensional super cool um, there's even some teeth that are kind of indicated inside the mouth here that that is nominally in uh, complementary shapes you've got complementary shapes here these just accentuate and draw your eye to the fact that this is a very three-dimensional shape. And, and this guy is um, very three-dimensional. Now our tiki has a whole lot of contours. It's much smaller, of course, but we're gonna accentuate these contours with complementary shapes. We're only gonna use one color to start with, and it's it's a, a similar color. It's literally the same color we, we painted on as a base coat with a whole lot more yellow in it just to, as a contrast. And we're going to use the base coat to create lines like this. You can see these, are, these black lines on this are not painted on. The colors are painted on to the black to kind of give it um, three-dimensional shapes and forms. When we're done painting on our complementary shapes, We'll add details like this is literally the prototype, very first tiki, and you can or that I made, and you can see there's patterns and things that are, are drawn on here to kind of reinforce that. These are relatively simple patterns, but because there's a bunch of them, and the way they're arranged, it adds a, a real look of complexity to the tiki. That when you think about it, it really isn't all that complex. And it carries over to the back. There's, you know, there's simple designs that really add visual interest to the tiki. And that's, frankly, that's all it's for is we're just adding visual interest to our tiki. So I'm going to start that process right now with this one. I'm going to start 
Um, probably what I'm going to start with the eyes. I'm going to make sure my paint is mixed up pretty good. Again, just like working the skin on the tiki, if there's a little bit of streaks and off color in the in the paint, I don't really care. I kind of like that. It adds, I don't know, something to it. So I'm going to paint the eye, and I'm going to divide this painted shape of the eye into two parts. I'm going to paint like a bottom and a top as though it had eyelids. And I think what I'm going to do is actually, I'm only, only going to paint a top. And I'm not painting lines per se, the lines just kind of develop themselves by the edge of the shape, if you're careful. Now, again, I'm using a very soft bristled brush, and that soft bristled brush tends to give me good, good results in smooth paint. If you don't have a soft bristled brush, just incorporate the lines that you get into your design. Now this looks like I'm only painting half of the eye and that's because I am only painting half of the eye. I'll paint the other half with a, a different color just for fun. But just to give it a little visual interest. And I want my lines to be fairly clean but they don't have to be perfect because I'm going to come back with I think I'll use some uh, paint markers or something to kind of clean up my lines and if I don't have paint markers which I may not haven't looked I might just use a, a, a little bit finer brush and anything will do even markers themselves just ordinary markers if your paint is clean enough you can draw right on this with good fresh markers and get pretty good results but that's you can see that's a pretty clean design there. I'll do, I'm going to kind of try and keep it nominally symmetrical. So I'm going to paint its match here on the other side. I'll just paint this eye. I'm trying to keep a little space. Anytime I've got the forms drawn, you can see I'm not painting all the way up into the eye there, up into the eyelid. I'm keeping a tiny little space there. That just gives me a visual break and I can look over to the other side just kind of flip it around and see where I need to go with it and if you make little boo-boos here it's not a big deal you just incorporate them into your design and while I'm looking at this now that I'm painting shapes I can see how asymmetrical my design actually is it's not exactly the same from left to right and I don't care even a little bit. It's totally cool with me. There are folks that get really wound up about, well, it's not the same from, you know, both sides are not the same. It's junk. Well, no, it's just visually interesting. Take that little design cue and go with it. So there you go. I've got eyes now painted on my tiki, and they're not exactly identical, and I don't exactly uh, care about that. I am going to make them kind of try and make them similar in shape, but similar is not the same as exact, and exact is not necessary. And there we go. So there's the first shapes painted on there. I'm gonna paint now some, I'll put some contrast on, I'm gonna do the eyebrows. Now there's a kind of a diamond shape in between the eyebrows, so I'm just gonna accentuate that. And I'm not going to paint all the way onto it. I'm just going to. There we go. This tiki has a very. It's a lot of green in it. I haven't really decided where, where that's going to lead me. But. I think it's okay. It's saying grass to me. I don't know what that means necessarily, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. This one may never develop into any particular theme, but the colors are very earthy so far. And that's cool. I like that. I'm not trying to force this one. I don't really, I mean, it doesn't really matter what it comes out to be so much as long as it works design-wise, you know, 
the actual goal is, is very free form. I'm not trying to make it be any particular thing other than just a cool looking tiki. And don't get don't get too bent out of shape and worried about, you know, well it doesn't look the way I wanted it. Yeah, okay, but is it cool? That's what really matters. And if it's cool, even if it's not exactly what you started out as or what you intended, that's kind of how art works, you know. It's we're making art here, not a product. As long as it's cool looking. Well, that's what really matters, isn't it? The paint is not as tr opaque as I might like. It's taking a little extra application. It might have been smarter to use a little bit smaller brush, but oh well. We're going to go with what we got this time. And a little bit, you can see the, the, the paint is kind of thinning itself and becoming transparent towards the edge of the eye, eyebrow here. And I'm not sure I don't like that, but I am going to make it a little darker. And I don't care that my edges are perfect, because like I said, I'm going to clean those up with a contrast color at some point. So there it is. I've got eyebrows. I'm leaving this area here in the front intentionally undone because I'm not sure what I'm going to develop that. I might make that a contrast color, something to bring a little visual interest there, but we'll see what develops. I am going to make an effort to do this neatly, but I'm not going to worry about a little boo-boo here and there. And you always want to be pulling your brush and pull it slowly and you can really get clean lines if you're not in a too big a rush. And I do kind of want to get this done, but it doesn't have to be done in 10 seconds. So I'm just kind of getting it done in a timely fashion, but not at a big rush. And you can see I'm using a fairly big brush. I'm getting clean results because I've got plenty of paint on board. On the brush, that is. And it works. Remember, perfect is the enemy of good enough and what I'm looking for is good enough. I don't want perfect. Perfect will make you crazy. And there we go. Got Tiki now has eyes and brows and contrasting color. And contrast is the key. Contrast is the big difference between uh, one color or shade or whatever in the next. And while this is the same color, it's still green, it is a contrasting green. It's a whole lot warmer green, it has yellow in it. And that gives it just some visual interest, which is what I'm looking for. Now I'm gonna paint some shapes on the nose, or I'm gonna paint them beside the nose. And my eyes, they go way right down here, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna kind of define that shape of the eye by this shape that I paint on right now. Mindful of the contours of the existing forms. Wrap it around. And there it is. I'm not going to paint a big shape here. I'm going to paint a smaller shape. And I'm going to leave room for additional shapes, but I am going to try and follow the contour lines of the things that are already there. And this paint is really thick, so it's given me a lot of blobs and it's not real smooth. 
And I just, you know, I don't care. It's fine. It's not my favorite color either. It's kind of a chartreuse, which even a colorblind person like myself can see is not by itself. This wouldn't be a terribly pretty color. But because it's part of the part of the design and, it comp and it's a not compliment, but it's a, a good color, contrast color, that's going to work for me. And I think I'll pull this up a little further. There we go. What I'm doing now is I'm defining the underside of that eye. And I'll come and I'll clean that up with another color later. And now that I've got this side done, I'm going to go ahead and do the opposite side. Make sure I get things kind of looking similar. I like a little bit of symmetry. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical, but a little bit of symmetry just to add some visual interest. That wants to come this way. And you don't have to use the same color. In fact, I'm kind of leaning now towards adding a third color. I don't know what necessarily right now, but maybe something a little more yellowy just because. And what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of creating that, that shape that complements the, the forms that are already here. And I'll just put some paint in there. It helps that my brush, while it's a big brush, it has very soft bristles and it does have a bit of a point to it so I can kind of guide that little blob of paint around. And the soft bristles allow me to smooth it pretty good. And this is one side and I'm going to paint the other side more or less. It kind of curves around like it had cheekbones, which that's a good thing. Yeah, it's kind of a little further out. There we go. 